Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about initializing primitive types and classes using two different types of syntax, parentheses and curly braces. And maybe you've seen this code in the wild, so it could be a little bit confusing, but I want to go ahead and demystify that a little bit just so you understand a little bit more about what's going on. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in here and look at an example. So where I'm going to start is just by creating a primitive type. I know we've been talking about classes, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I just want to start with creating some variable A, and typically how we initialize it is something like this. But we can also use another syntax where we create another variable and just create it as such here, or we can even use another syntax where we use curly braces. And at this point you're saying, why in the world do we have three different ways to initialize our variables? So in fact, if I compile this, you'll see it compiles just fine. Uh, if I were to run through this in GDB or print these out, all of these variables would in fact be four. So what is the difference here in this particular case? Well, the special syntax or the thing that's actually different is the curly brace initialization here. So let me go ahead and show you if I make a little bit of a mistake here, or maybe I've just changed my code over time, or for whatever reason, these become uh, decibel numbers here. Well, now when I compile this, you'll notice that I get an error here at line eight, where I've used the curly brace initialization, and that essentially prevents narrowing. So we have to be very explicit about our type here. This is expecting an integer. Okay, so when you see this for primitive types or types that you know, this is what happens, okay? But sometimes though, you might see with other types or classes that we've been working with, something like this. So maybe you've seen a data type like a vector before. We are going to talk about this um, in a little bit. And you might notice that folks create a vector, say of integers, and they initialize it in this way here. Now, what is actually going on here? If I go ahead and compile this, you'll see that it compiles just fine. And I can go ahead and I'm just gonna show you the uh, simplest syntax here. Let's just go ahead and do auto uh, for some index here in our vector. And let's just print out the value i and in an end line here. And I'll go ahead and run this and you'll see we print out one, two, and three. So this is actually using something known as an initializer list to create this object and populate it as part of its constructor with the values 1, 2, and 3. Again, I'm going to talk a little bit about vectors and do a dedicated lesson on that shortly in our series where we talk about the different containers in the C++ library. But it is important to note that this is in fact different than if I were to use, say, a um, parentheses here. And in fact, I'm going to get a whole slew of errors because I don't have a constructor defined for three parameters. Now, sometimes where I have to be a little bit careful, though, is, well, what if I do something like this for a vector? Because maybe there is a constructor with a first parameter and a second parameter. Let's just go ahead and run this here. And you'll see this actually is a special constructor for this data type that creates 10 elements and initializes them to one here. Okay, so when we're working with objects, curly braces actually matter. Okay, so let's rewind a little bit here and get to talking about how we can actually create a data type that one uses the uh, braces so you can see where this matters and just do a few more examples. Now, before I dive into that, though, I just wanted to show you something to help you remember these rules. Um, if you Google for the Google C++ style guide, and then if you find the section on variable and array initialization, you'll find a nice sort of summary of what we talked about with initializing just primitive types here versus something like a string um, or some other data type that is some user defined type or some library type um, such as the standard library types like string, vector, and so on, which we'll talk about and just remind you of this idea that we have this initializer list syntax here. Okay. So with that said here, it is useful to go ahead and browse on CPP reference. If you'd like the standard initializer list, this is what we're going to be working on. So I can show you how to take advantage of the syntax for objects that you create. Now, an initializer list, what exactly is that? Well, let's go to the whiteboard really quick and just go ahead and see that essentially all it is is a collection here. 
where I have a length, that is the number of elements here, and then the actual elements themselves here, which would be in this collection here. So maybe I put some numbers in here, maybe they're out of order or whatever they are, and that's essentially it. And the library itself, or this implementation of this data type here, also provides some ways for us to iterate through this actual collection, that is to visit each of these elements in some specified way. So it's essentially an array that's wrapped up, okay? So if you'd like to think about this pretty much as a standard array that we've learned about, it's very similar to this idea. It's just even more lightweight than that in terms of its functionality. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and create some data type that uses an initializer list and understand this a little bit. Now, a little tip for learning some of these things, I'm going to, of course, walk through this uh, example with you and create a type here, but it can also be useful to look at some of these standard template library types. So if you go into Google and search for your compiler, or they're using G++, Clang++, uh, which are open source compilers, you'll be able to find, usually on the GitHub here, the actual implementation for a uh, vector data structure, or if you'd like, you can search for the initializer list here, header file. I'll do the same thing by visiting the GitHub, and you can see a little bit about what is in this actual type. And again, you'll see that the actual uh, type here, initializer list, and we've yet to in this series talk about templates, but we'll talk about, you can ignore that for now, um, is essentially just a way to iterate through some data, and that data, well, we keep track of how much it is, the actual length. So that's a little bit of an advanced thing, depending on where you're at in the series. But again, it might be useful to get used to seeing how some of these professional libraries are actually implemented. OK, so with that said, though, let's go ahead and focus on our task here and create a new data type. Again, I'm going to do things as a struct just so everything's public and easy to work with. I'll create a constructor here and I'll go ahead and uh, create a destructor um, just so we have that and maybe I'll have some private data here. Now, what are we storing? Well, again, I want to use this initializer list, basically this uh, data uh, structure here. And I'll make sure I spell this right, initializer list. And let's go ahead and set it up. Now, this is a templated type, which means when we create the actual uh, data structure, we have to specify what's going to be stored inside it. And I'm just going to use integers here, and I'll call this mData here. Okay, so here's our initializer list here. Okay, and what we can go ahead and do is specify a constructor that takes advantage of this initializer list here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and use this one here. And again, it's just going to take integers, and I'll just call uh, this our data that it's taking in. And just to be really simple here, I'm just going to go ahead and set our data to whatever the argument is. And again, for learning purposes here, I'll make this just a little bit smaller. It can be useful just to print out a message here, initializer uh, list constructor. OK, because I want to show you when this actually gets called here. OK. So let's go ahead and do a quick example here of constructing this. So I can show you well, what happens here is I can create our user defined type here, u, and now I can use this syntax here and create a few um, different values in it for this initializer list. And if I go ahead and compile this, you'll see it compiles just fine here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now, it might also be useful for us to print out this uh, data here. So I'm going to do sort of a similar thing that I did uh, previously and just print out our data here. So for each of the elements here in M data, let's just go ahead and do a printout here. Um, and I'll just print these on the same line here and maybe put a comma between them and an end line here. OK, so let's go ahead and compile that. Um, and let's actually make sure that we call our function here, print data. And I'm going to make this just so you can see everything on one screen. And let's go ahead and give this a run here. All right, so compiled. 
and I run it, and we can see that the initializer list constructor was called, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. Okay. Now, what happens if I was going to construct this object with no uh, constructor here? Okay, so I compile it, and again, this is the only constructor that we actually have here. So I could use this syntax here. Uh, let's go ahead and try that, which constructs an empty list. So nothing's going to print out here, uh, just the end line. Um, but what if I try using the parentheses here? Well, again, let's see what happens here. Well, we essentially just get some you know, syntax that doesn't work. This just doesn't conform. We can't just have the um, empty uh, parentheses here, okay? Now, where things get a little bit interesting here is, let's say I use this initializer list here, and I have, say, one, two, and three, okay? So I'll just go ahead and run this, and we'll go ahead and see that this is calling this and populating this data structure. And, in fact, I can be a little bit more efficient here uh, by practicing some of the things that we've done in our previous lessons here by setting m data uh, to data here so that I'm not doing a copy and have potential to do um, move semantics, okay? Um, and this works just fine. But what if I go ahead and define, say, another constructor here, okay? So sort of like for the vector, we had different constructors that were set up here. Okay, so I could have a user defined type, and I'm just going to make things up here. I'll just have A, B, and C as the arguments. And maybe at the least, we want to just uh, print something out here, like the output here. And I'm just going to call this the constructor with three params. Okay, so with this exercise here, if I go ahead and compile this here, go ahead and take a moment to think about this. And I'll go ahead and move it up here and ask yourself what constructor is going to be called at line 27 because again I have three things here so is that going to call the initializer list because we use the initializer list syntax or is that going to create uh, this user defined type with the three parameter thing here okay so I'll compile pause if you haven't made a guess yet and I'll go ahead and hit enter and well, again, we see that because we use the curly brace notation and we have this type specified here that can take in the initializer list, that is what C++ will use. OK, so let's play around with this just a little bit more just to make things concrete. If I go ahead and use parentheses here with three elements, now it will use the constructor with three params. Um, that's right here. And we can see that none of our data actually got populated in this case here. Okay, let's play around with this um, just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and use our um, curly brace syntax and let's try to break some rules here. What if I use some uh, decimals here? Well, again, because we use the curly brace initialization and with the initializer list, this prevents the narrowing of our data. So this is a good thing. If you know the type here, typically you'll want to use the curly braces here. And if you know you have an initializer list constructor here, uh, that's what you'll want to use here. Okay. Now, where things get again a little bit odd here, um, let me go ahead and just comment out and say we don't have our initializer list uh, constructor here. And will this compile? Well, again, because we are using the curly brace initialization, it doesn't compile because again, it's preventing us from narrowing here. Okay. But what if I go ahead and make these um, integers here? Okay. Because that's the types that I've specified at line five. And I'll go ahead and rerun this. Now it in fact compiles and it's using the constructor with three parameters, okay? Because this time we don't have an initializer list that is set up as a constructor, so it finds this instead. And again, the purpose of the curly braces here is just to make sure that we are using integers, okay? Um, so that's uh, what is going on here. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and um, end this lesson here and just refer you again to this guide here, the Google style guide that could be useful for keeping this straight.
Now, I know for a long time when I saw curly braces when initializing an object, again, I said, why are they adding that to the language? Why are there so many ways to do things? But again, the curly braces is for using an initializer list if you have that defined in your constructor. You can see an example of that in vector, for instance, if you want to actually see how it's used. Um, or the curly brace notation is used to prevent type conversions, that is, taking something that you've declared as, say, a uh, or, or passed in as a float and are really expecting an integer, for example. So that's the use case. So I hope this lesson helps straighten things out. If it doesn't, then please comment below so I can try to clear it up further for you. Uh, and if this lesson has cleared up some of the confusion for you or you just didn't know about this, please give this video a like and subscribe to help the channel as we grow. And of course, we'll be having more content coming very, very soon, talking more about classes and, as I mentioned, more of the standard template library and some of those data structures. So we'll see you soon for those lessons, folks.